just to reflect and to repeat on many of the things that we've already gone over, hopefully to reinforce uh, and continue to to ponder upon uh, manhood, regarding manhood and masculinity from the Islamic paradigm. <clears throat> when a man wakes and when he gets up from his place of sleep and does his morning at thought, when he makes wudu, goes to worship his Lord, in every moment, he must remember who he is. And when a man goes to work in the world and to toil and to mix with the people and to exert himself and laugh and to argue and seeking the means of Allah's risk, in all of those moments, he must remind himself and be mindful of who he is. And when a man is with his family or running his business or at the masjid, or eating food, or throughout every small act of worship, small or large act of worship to Allah, somewhere in the midst of life's circumstances, and in the middle of perils and hardship, he must, <clears throat> and we must, uh, know ourselves and who and what we are <coughs> as men. And one of the greatest trials, not only of our age, but of our species in general, one of the greatest mm. conflicts that we have is lies. People lying to us and of us lying to people, not being truthful. Figures of authority, our world governments, in our schools, in mass media, in our own families, sometimes within the masajid as well. We are lied to. And Allah has made no place completely free of deception today except for uh, within the confines of his holy and preserved book, the Blessed Quran. And many times people don't mean to lie to you or to me. And their intention is often good, but somebody lied to them. And they carried on that lie. And they spread it to the people. Us, and sometimes we continue to convey, spread these lies, and we don't even realize that they're lies. And only those whom Allah has had mercy upon are truthful and honest and knowledgeable and, and discerning enough to see through the common falsehood because it is very common. And among the masters of today's lies is that of identity. Who and what we are, something that is often lied about and something that we've already spoken about extensively. Whether it be like we, stopped, like, like we talked about, identity politics, LGBT, transsexuality, man become a woman, this and that, I'm this, or what we spoke about you know, uh, different identities, choosing religion, this religion, that religion, is that even a valid thing to say? Man has been deceived into thinking that he can choose and modify his life and his identity. This has been a deception upon us. Men and women have been convinced and deceived into believing that they have the choice to be other than what Allah has made us or made them. And this happens physically, mentally, and spiritually, emotionally, to us in this room as well. Not being taught and nurtured as what we truly are meant to be, as Muslims and as men. The Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon us, is the greatest man to grace this earth and the greatest of creation to be witnessed and experienced by people. And it's the greatest example of every facet of life in, in, in every sense of the, of, the, of the term. And nothing he did was arbitrary or random or circumstantial or just cause. He didn't do anything just because or on any whims. We know this for a fact. Rather, there is a deep wisdom behind every aspect of his character. And there is guidance behind each and every one of his words and each and every one of his stories that is related in each and every one of his actions. <laughs> And in his life, there is nothing short of a display of perfection of character in terms of mankind. Unlearning the lie and inculcating the truth, realizing the reality of this creation that is called the human, the creation of Allah. When it comes to learning the truth of this, we must look at our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as a primary source. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a father. 
and he was a husband and he was a teacher and he was a friend. He was a man who worked, a man who planned, who did things in the world. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was also a warrior. He was a man who literally picked up swords and shields and spears against evil men and dealt with them physically. He plotted military expeditions and he sent men to battle and he battled himself. And we've heard these stories. Allah sent him down to do many different things. And one of those things in a great matter of those things was to fight. And this is the greatest confirmation that we have that in the identity of the ideal Muslim man is the warrior. And one of our purposes here is to quote unquote wage war. And we're going to continue to clarify this. <laughs> Not to mention the vast amount of ayat and hadith saying all of these things, you know, the peak of Islam is jihad, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to get into that, but just the fact that we know that Muhammad Sallallahu was a warrior is confirmation enough. He spent so much of his life as a war general and a soldier himself. Uh, 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 and so we know that the Muslim man is, of course, a worshiper and a slave and a guardian of the earth and an enjoiner of good and a forbidder of evil as well as, as we said, a warrior. And about war, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported in Bukhari Muslim and already mentioned by Brother Gabriel, he said, war is deceit. War is deception. Nothing more, nothing less. War is deceit. Deceit is war. There's several things spoken about here within these three straightforward words. You have the subject, war itself, and then its description or its elucidation, deceit. And of course, implied is, is the fact that there are two parties here. Every war has, at the very least, two sides. And each side looks to the other side in a war as their enemy. And from the wisdoms of, from the wisdoms, the many wisdoms, of the final messenger of mankind being commanded to wage war, and of him being an example of a warrior is to show us and to remind us that war is a constant. And there is no day or hour or minute or second that we spend in which we are not in some form or fashion, whether we realize it or not, fighting a war. And Allah has made that obvious uh, in the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that can be lied about or it can be ignored or forgotten or covered up. But the fact remains, no matter what, that we are at war at all times, whether we like it or not. And returning to the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, quote unquote, war is deceit, war is deception. This is often looked at, especially from those, like we mentioned, reading um, the Sun Tzu, or known as the Art of War, as a statement of training and advice about offensive war, or as you being the one who's going to make a move, for example. As in, you know, you should use deceit, you should use deception. And this is true in terms of an actual war. But more valuable in these words is that in actuality, it's a warning when you think about it. War is deception, war is deceit. That is a warning to us. War is deceit. And whether we choose to be a part of a conflict is irrelevant. Because there is a war being waged upon us. And one of our enemy's greatest tricks and tools is to trick us into forgetting that our enemy even exists. Or even worse, fooling us into believing that our enemy is actually somebody completely different than who he is. We make our brothers our enemies. We make our families our enemies and our communities. This person, that guy, this girl, this ex, whatever. This movement, this group, this country, whatever, whatever it could be. Finding something in this world that you make your enemy. We are deceived into attributing our ills to anything except the real source of the problem. We see this in 
uh, uh, this is the, the, the basis of propaganda, scapegoats, etc. You see, you think of, um, for example, the second world war, this is things that, that we all learned about in terms of Germany and, you know, oh, you see the posters and they make the Jews out to be rats and they're, oh, they're the real source of the problem or this, this group is the real source of the problem. Communist China is really these people. It's the people who believe in God, et cetera, et cetera. There's commonly somebody made to be the enemy. Uh, 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 they convince the people that it's this group, it's this person that is actually your, your enemy and the real source of your problem. And it's a lie. That's the foundation of propaganda. And this is happening to us. Blame them, fight amongst each other, and then the problem never actually gets solved. Because if we cannot identify the true enemy and recognize him, study him, and prepare for his attacks, then the war is already lost. Our identity is already lost. And our mission would have already been failed if we cannot identify our enemy. And this shows the value of not being gullible and naive, like many people are, about any aspect of life. So as, a, as, a, as, the, as this warrior, as a Muslim man, step one is knowing who we are. And step two is knowing who the enemy is. And the scholars of Islam have identified from the Quran and the Sunnah the four main enemies of man that we must realize. Allahu Alam, who, who actually codified this list? Some people say it's Imam Ahmed, some people say it's others. I couldn't find the exact source, but this is very common among the scholars of Islam. And these enemies are Shaitan, the dunya, this temporary world, the nefs, ego, you could say, and how well, low, lowly desires, base desires of man. So we have, I repeat, shaitan, the dunya, nefs, and how well. And these four are imperative to know and to study and to recognize in every second of our daily lives. Because all of these four, like I said, whether you like it or not, are waging war upon you. That's called defensive war. As in somebody's attacking you, there's nothing that you can do except for fight back or else you perish and you're gone. So shaitan is the greatest deceiver. And he will lie to you and lie to me and urge you and urge me and whisper to you and whisper to me to do the haram until he proves that mankind is a bad creation. So declare war against him. Consciously declare war against him. This dunya, this temporary and illusionary world will try to appear permanent. It will try to pose as paradise. It will keep offering you more and more pleasures until you forget about the akhirah. So declare war against it. Our nafs, our egoism, and our pride and our arrogance will ruin us from the inside out. They say arrogance destroys a good deed after you've done it. You feel, look at me, right? Feeling conceited, looking down upon others. Racism, entitlement, hatred, classism, these all start from the nefs and the love of self, right? The lower self. So declare war against it. And our hawa, our lowly desires, our want, our deep want for food and for sex, that uncontrollable lust, that yearning for pleasure, and that want for, for, for relief and satisfaction and ease. It's this enemy that led men to getting life-changing diseases to getting poison and it's it, 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 it's these desires that 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 lures men and has lured great men into getting assassinated into into becoming a shell of their former selves because they wanted the pleasure of this world so much to the point where it was the death of them so declare war against that and it was said in the Sun Tzu, like we said, commonly known in the West as the art of war, that, let me find the quote here. Look me and know yourself. <coughs> and in a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. Know you're the enemy and know your own self. And in 100 battles, as in, in all of the battles, you will never be in peril. As in, as long as you know yourself truly, and you know who your enemy is truly, then you can't lose. <clears throat> and 
And inshallah, with this as a foundation, we can truly begin to reflect upon and fulfill what it means to be a warrior for the sake of Allah. Enjoining the good that he has commanded us to enjoin and forbidding the evil that he has commanded us to forbid. And so may Allah make us from the most intelligent and discerning of man. I mean, may Allah never allow us to forget our enemies. May he never allow us to take an enemy as a friend. I mean, and may he grant us victory against our enemies and victory against evil wherever we may find it. I mean. And so inshallah, let Hassan continue to, uh, to uh, bounce off.